of Game 5. A second straight year we have a standalone Game 5 on a Friday. I'm Norman Jamal. This is Sand Dune Shalom. Sandy, welcome back. Thank you. For another preview show of and recap show of what's been a wild World Series, Sandy. Yes. Um, let's talk about game four, basically. We've already gone through the first couple of games. Okay. Um, but game four deserves a recap of its own. It was wild. A lot to unpack uh, in game four. Uh, a lot of twists and turns in this game. Oh, yeah. Felt like we were going to crown a champion about 10 minutes into the game. Um, but Los Caballos wasn't having it. And uh, just really an unbelievable game setting up, like you said, this standalone game five. Nothing more exciting than uh, one game, winner take all, take this bad boy home. Uh, I know Mo Money didn't want to be here on Friday, but... I think everybody else, uh, the fans, they just love it. It's going to be unbelievable atmosphere here on Friday. It's also going to be, just like last year, an extremely hot day. Last year, Kakambas versus Knights, that amazing game. I mm. think the final score was 8-6. Yes. Um, it, it was a back-and-forth game. It was tremendous. The big players stepped up. Um, but I think the end score ended up being 8-6. But what I remember that day, which is so hard to portray over highlights, is how hot and sticky and muggy it was day. that day. It was a stifling day doing the game, I remember. Um, and similar to Friday, I believe calling for a clear sky. A lot of times when you're doing these games, you prefer that partly cloudy sky. Yeah. Get yourself some shade. I don't think we're going to get that. Talking about a, a feel-like temp of in the 90s when we play, but no matter, Game 5, YMSL, everybody will be here. Oh, everyone will be here, and it's because of the weather, it's going to be even more of a gut check than we already have. Both teams are shorthanded. Mo Money will not have Nate Batesh at third base. He's out of the country. Um, Los Caballos will not have Jody, he's injured, and will not have Fonz, he's in Israel. Right. So, they're already down to 10 players. Yeah, Caballos is going 10, and all 10 have to hit and field. Yeah, so Jeffrey Sack is going to be hitting okay. in this game. I don't think it's a bad thing that Jeffrey's batting, because the bottom of that lineup for Los Caballos has been as weak as can possibly be. They haven't contributed anything no. from the 9 and 10 spots. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, Jeffrey also, uh, nobody sees him bat a lot, but he can handle the bat when he, when he's asked to. Um, he has hit over his career. Um, you know, maybe it's a spark. He's an intense guy. I don't know. Uh, losing his catch, never easy. He's used to pitching to him. But I'm assuming Joe uh, Ashkenazi is going to be uh, the replacement and a more than capable backstop for Jeffrey. The, yeah, I think that's fine defensively um, and offensively. I think it's okay that they're going to make that that move that they have to make. Yeah. The bigger question is on Abe Hollywood Dweck. Right. He's coming off an injury. If he can't play outfield and they have to put him at short center where he made the final out of the game, go yes. figure, um, David Richney would have to go to left right. or right. I would put him in right and move Elsack to left. But I don't think they're going to do that. They don't want to do too much. Uh, they always say change as little as you can. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you, now you, you're talking about changing an extra guy. Um, I don't mind him in left. I think the ball's trickier in right field. You actually always told me that. Yeah, it is. Um, and David not not in the outfield a lot this year. I think he might be able to handle left a little easier. But Rishdi's a unique guy in that he has had plenty of reps at every position yeah, on this field. he can handle anywhere. Third, short center. First, right, left. I'd go to war with Rishdi in any of those places. Absolutely. I don't love what I'm seeing from Elliot Saka in right field. He's been not average. He's been below average in right. The throw he made this week, we'll get there, yeah, was, yeah. was could have cost them the season. Um, so we'll get there in a second. But let's talk about Mo Money. There's no way you could convince me. There's no way you could convince me, Sandy, that after game one, they thought that they would not be hoisting this trophy. They had a laugher in game one. They were probably wondering, what the hell is this Los Caballos team doing in the World Series? That's the way every team has felt that they've been in the playoffs and how you know they beat yeah. Toledo and they beat Hubba. 
Now they're in the World Series. They got destroyed in Game 1. I cannot be convinced, no matter what Mo Haber tells me, oh, backs against the walls, this, that. They definitely thought that by Sunday they'd be sweeping them. If not, by Game 4, 4 nothing, they'd be hoisting the trophy. They have to be shocked that they're in this position. Norman, I won't try to convince you out of that because I agree with you. I think the overwhelming sentiment in the league coming in was that Mo Money was the better team. They have the better lineup. Uh, they're going to do damage. They're going to win the series easily. A lot of people predicted a sweep. Um, and I agree with you. After that Friday game, I think they left here, and rightfully so, with a lot of confidence. Um, and I do agree with you. I think the sentiment around the league has been, why is Los Caballos here? But you know what, Norman? They keep rallying around that. And every time their backs are against the wall, they answer the bell. And if you're playing game five of the World Series, you belong there. Yeah. And I don't care if you played them in the regular season and they were terrible and you swept them easily or whatever you want to tell me. They make errors. They don't hit. All of that's true. They might take three innings off. But you know what? In the fifth, sixth, and seventh inning, they're coming for you. So this is a team that when, when a team behaves that way, that's a dangerous team. And I don't think Mo Money thought they were in for that. I don't think anybody thought they were in for that. And to their credit, they continue to do that. I think you nailed it in that it's hard to figure out how to beat this team because you could do everything right against them. You could say, let's get out in front. Let's put a four spot in the first inning right. before they even come to bat. Then when they come back to 4-3 and they get a turnover called or whatever it is, let's take advantage of their errors. When Jake makes an error, Lee makes an error, Elsack makes an error, all in secession, let's tack on and let's make it 6-3 late. You could do all of that and still not beat this team. Like it's, Then what's the formula? How it, do you beat them? It then? makes no sense. Like you say, at 4 nothing. They get the game to 4-2 and then 4-3, but it stays there. So if, if you're watching the game, when they get it to 4-3, you're like, oh, they have the momentum now. But what happens? They make three errors in an inning. Mo Money takes advantage of it. Now they yeah. have a 6-3 lead. That should be the game. Mo Money did everything yes. right. They took advantage That's of their the errors. That's the game right there. What happens? They come right back and answer. So, again, like you say, there is no formula. I'm not a rara magic cinderella guy i watch the game i see what happens in the game i'm not that this destiny that I, I don't believe in that but there's something in the team that believes they're never out of it it's a mindset and no matter what's going on they come back i, I think it i think a team that was better in the regular season would not be able to come back the way Caballos has come back. Because they've For, done it. Th yeah, like if Toledo was down 4 nothing after the first, I think you put him away. If Hubba was down 4 nothing, came to 4-3, and then it was 6-3, that's end. That, that's the, you, you'd be hearing all offseason when we gave up that fifth and sixth run, it killed us, you know? Right. But this team... It, it's sort of like uh, they just – I don't know what it's well, go, go analogous the whole thing. to. But. They, they, the playing game, down 4-1. Navy is pitching probably the best I've seen him pitch in a few years. Lewis said that he's better than he was all year. Like, you know, this is I the mean, best he, he's th been. There's no reason for them to come back and win that game. They win it. Hubba Bubba wins game wait, wait, one. Wait. Toledo. Oh, Toledo. I'm Toledo sorry. was up 4-0. Yes. Uh, Toledo nothing. was up 4-0 four four in that game. They come back and win that game. Hubba Bubba wins game one. They don't bat an eyelash. They come back and win two in a row, including a one nothing thriller. We saw what we saw here. Every time Mo Money takes a lead in the series, Los Caballos comes back. They've traded wins. They're always there for that. Now, Mo Money is an unbelievable team. Their lineup is very long. They're a scary team to face. I know Mo Haber likes to change the narrative a little and say everybody doubts us and we're the underdogs. They are not the underdog in this series, Norman. I think they're the underdog now. Because, I think because you're going to say that everybody is thinking uh, this is, you know, this is meant to be, and they, they win every game. In late. general, you get to a one game, I think it tips to the underdog, which is Los Caballos. Hence, the favorite becomes I, the underdog. I, I hear what you're saying, and I think... The longer the series is, the more advantage the better team will get. And I think there's also something to knowing... As the other team, forget about Caballos, that they think they're always in the game. Yeah. There's something that 
to the other team thinking nothing is safe because we were doing the game. It was four nothing. They hit two. They had two consecutive base hits to start the inning. Now it starts to creep into more money. Ah, oh, this team doesn't go away. Right. You know. Uh, you know, it's going to be four two in a second, and that's what happened. And so th there's a lot of baseball is a mental game, and I say it all the time on the air. Things happen throughout the game, and it's 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 half mental, really. Mm -hmm. And I think that all of these things come into play in a series like this. It's why a team that went five and nine is now one win away from a championship. Saul Towell said something on the other preview show that Los Caballos, before the game, took issue with. Saul said they're playing on a plane of zero. They can't make one mistake and survive. They they have to be perfect. And Caballos told me before that game. It's just not true. We make mistakes and they're we never somehow perfect. come back. They're never perfect. They're never perfect. No. And they made a ton of mistakes yeah. in this game. A they ton. take full they take full innings off. Yes. In other words, they don't field right. They don't throw the ball right. They don't run the bases right. They give away at bats. They take full innings off. They get behind. They don't need to be perfect to win. And every person screws up equally in that Jake error. Okay, he's a replacement. Lee error, he's a cornerstone. Elliot Saka error, he's in right field because he's supposedly the better fielder of the outfielders. He makes an error. Jeffrey Saka walks the 10 guy. Like, everyone is contributing yes. to the debacle. But they are and a team. They every, come together. They also contribute on the comeback. They it's also, unbelievable. It's crazy. It's, it's really something else to watch because it's, it, you know, these kind of teams, sometimes they sneak into the playoffs. They really don't. I was looking at the records. I was seeing if they actually could be a World Series champion with a sub-500 record. Yeah, it's Fiddler they on the Goop. They the can't. Last... They're 12-12 twelve twelve right now. Yes, they're 12-12 twelve twelve now, 7-3 and three since the postseason with the Navy game included. Right, so 7-3 right. and three since the postseason started. But Mo Money as well. I mean, this team, again, we've been through it a billion times. They started 0-2, then they came back. Everyone did doubt them early once we had the preview show okay. which has been misquoted a billion times which is like it got stupid at a certain point like oh you gave him an F you gave him an F if Michael Cohen is pitching I think that team's an F because of how good of a center fielder he is which we've seen right you even pointed out at a certain point you liked that he didn't throw home at a certain point it was actually on Jake's hit that yes. brought him up 8-6 yes. he left the runner at second so it didn't get the 9-6 10-6 it only got there the following innings he's a phenomenal center fielder John is a phenomenal shortstop. This year, until the final week, he could have won the gold glove. Maybe he still will win. I don't know. The votes are still being tallied. Right, right. We have to tally those. But he had a rough inning he in did. that five-run inning. He did, and they're, they're, I don't, they're not doing anything really in this series that I would say they didn't come to play or they didn't show up. They're playing very well. Their two wins have been resounding. Um, okay, they lost. They lost game game two clean. This game that they just lost, yes, they 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 blew a you know two leads, but it was that one inning. And yes, John had a couple of plays in that inning that I'm sure he'd want back. One is the non throw to first. That's the one that you you could get on him. The other one is there was some English on the ball. It was a little yeah. nubber. He couldn't pick it up. I didn't watch the highlights yet. But I remember live. It, it, You're right. You can't kill him for that. Okay, the first the one, throw wait. was something. first was Elliot Saka. He rocked it. It right. went over his glove. I don't know anyone that's making that play. Okay, fine. He didn't make that play. Guy gets on. But the next one, like you said, Mark is up. It's men on second and third. Score is six run. four. The score is six four because Farka was the runner at third, and the guy behind him was the runner on second. Lee had already scored. So it's six four. Second and third. Mark Braha is up. We discussed, do you walk him, do you not walk him? You were itching, inching towards walking him. I didn't want to walk him because I said, as many, however many men you put on with nobody out, yeah, those guys good. are probably going right. to score. They pitched to Mark Braha. You got a routine ground out. You got the best guy on their team out. Yeah, and you're up 6-4. You got their cleanup hitter out. It's 6-4. But John decided to look to third. It was the wrong move. You let that run score. You take the out at first base. For sure. For and sure. You have to take that out. He elected not to take the out. He looked back. Farka. Then he threw the ball. A Mo Haber saved two runs. Yes, it, was, it wasn't It was a good throw. It was a spike right. throw. It wasn't an easy hop even. And Mo had to do something like that. 
He saved two runs. Mo Haber in this game played a phenomenal first base. Yes. He had another play yes, yes. where he had to swipe a tag for the third yeah. out. And uh, he, he made a few very good plays at first base. But that was the one you could get on John about. And then the one of ABD's bat was a no, I, number. You can't really get on him about that. It was a number. And then the ball lands spinning. Had a hard time picking it up. ABD beats it out. At that point, it's it's 6-5. And it's, you know, bases loaded, no out still. And now, all of a sudden, you know, there's a little bit of a break. AB now is taking some more and more pitches. Maurice is trying to calm him down at the mound. But the wheels look like they were coming off. It felt like Caballos was finally going to take the lead, and they did. And to their credit, they tacked on and held held serve on that. Only gave up a run, meaningless run, really, in this in the seventh. Now, what's interesting is after the game was tied at six, David Harari was up. Yes. In the first inning, when it was second and third, they walked David Harari, and they pitched to Jake, and Jake got out. In this inning, they didn't intentionally walk him, but they threw four balls out of the strike yeah, zone. Total. So unintentional, intentional. Right. In the first inning, even though it worked, a couple of guys on the sidelines, um, Yaakov Soroya actually, was going crazy. He goes, you can't walk Harari to get to Jake. Harari's a fly-out guy. Um, he could pop up to the infield. And he actually said Jake hits more grounders and straight. And I, I Look, I feel, and Jake has that clutch gene in him, which he's been showing all year, yeah. he's gotten big hits. So yes, he's a rookie, a replacement, but not the prototypical out of high school rookie. He's a seasoned guy, he's an athlete, he's been around these situations in other sports. I, I, I In the first inning, maybe I understand it a little more because two outs, Right. with less than two out, I don't like it. Interesting. Um, now, Harari has the power, so if you're yes. fearing a home run, which you're not fearing. It's a tie game. You're fearing. You're, you're fearing a, a guy manufacturing Harari's a run. Harari's the guy. If, if somebody, if somebody's going to manufacture a run, Jake's the guy that's going to do it. Probably not. Unless Harari. you want to say Harari could fly out. He could, but he could than... also fly out, pop out to the infield. He I could. Mean, they didn't. They didn't throw him almost a strike. It wasn't no. like pitch him hard and whatever. It was. It was really an intentional walk. Yeah. Um, the other point about this series, the the stark difference from last year to this year is that these two teams legitimately do not like each other at all. I was going to say all. that, Norman. It's I... every game, and I get it. You don't have to like each other, um, you know, but it's gotten I, very ugly. I, I, I've been around the league a long time, and these series get intense, and both teams will probably say, nah, it's just the series and everything. There's a different feel than there was last year or, you know, the year swimming was put. All these teams... White Walkers, all these teams that had intense series mm -hmm. over the past few years. There's a different feel here um, where it looks like they genuinely dislike each other. Um, I don't see that mutual respect. I don't see that at all. I think that's what it is. There's no respect for each other. Well, in this I think series. I think in general there's zero respect for the Caballos because I believe the league and I don't know about more money. I can't speak for them. They're in a series, so they have to say the right things. But I believe the league thinks it's a joke that they're there. Because they were five and nine, I don't think the, the the sentiment I get, and I think it's wrong, is that they shouldn't be here. And uh, you know, eventually they're just going to lose. But you know what? They're in Game Five of the World Series. I've said it before. <laughs> I'll amazing. say it again. So I think that the I, I, I do. I don't see that respect that you usually see. Even though there's always chippiness, especially in this league, there's always that you know bravado and you know testosterone that flies around this league. There's a little bit of a different feel. There's more of a nasty feel to the series. Yeah, that's uh, it. And it gets a little ugly. It does. SmackDown versus White Walkers was about as intense as you could possibly get because the first four games of that series were yeah. one-run yeah. games, yeah. basically. Yeah. It included a 5 nothing comeback by the White Walkers, which had a team of Raw Dog, Joe G, John, um, Eddie Rishdi, Mavora, um, well, Hank... Not exactly choir boys, right, as you right, put it. Right. Who's the guy that used to say that? Avery one? Johnson. Do it, do it. Yeah, Avery Johnson used to say that the, that the Spurs were referred to as choir boys. And he said that's not necessarily a bad thing. Right. But that, that's but a the, good these thing. Are not, that's a good thing because that's church. Now, so 
that, that was a team that was coming back from 5 nothing, and then they came back in a 0-0 game or one old game in game four. Like, it was an intense yes. series, yes. and it never got ugly like this. Swimming versus Lookout had a 102 run-ins, but nothing like this. And then last year, Kakambas and Knights, that, that was a... Not that as good of a series. Because the first the series four wasn't games. so good. Only game five was good. So there wasn't the first four games weren't really intense. But I think the difference is what you said. It's not just the testosterone and the intensity. It's different. It's more of a nastiness, and I believe it's a lack of respect on both ends. I agree. It's not no, no. just I don't I don't I don't think that it's I don't think that it's only because combined. I think on both ends. I think neither team likes the other team or respects the other team. They don't that's, respect either that's team. The, right. That's the vibe I get being close by the field. You're always going to have the yelling and the rooting and the cheering and the and the and you know and the gamesmanship and all that. You just hope it doesn't get personal like it has a little bit. Um, it's gotten too personal. I agree. You can't call somebody a low life. Can't do that. And you can't dance on second base and grab your crotch. In front of 200 people, and you can't go into someone's face and do the money sign, no matter if it's your team or the other team's yeah. sign. Like I mean, that, I think you gotta I, have a little I, bit more restraint. I, I agree, and I think when you know, like you say, it, it's it's really it's both sides. It's both. Mo money's been in the wrong, and there are times where I think Caballos has been in the wrong in terms of this particular uh, subject that we're discussing. So again, for Game Five, it's going to be intense. Yeah. It's going to be, you know, everybody's got everything on the line. Everybody wants to win. Um, it's an intense league. Nobody's asking for people to just come and say, hey, nice shot, and, and pat the other team on the behind. Not at all. We don't want that. We don't look for that. That's not what we were about. You can't get a more intense Game 5 than we had last year. Correct. It, it, was, it, yeah. was this, it was this year's Game 4, but in Game 5. It you, was back four. You don't want it to become about a person or about a thing or about a grudge. You want it to be about the team. And the better team should win on Friday, and hopefully uh, everybody comes with their intensity, but has to dial back the personal nastiness a little bit, I think. So, if you go back nine years to the Expos, okay, I always took it as a compliment, and I was the one who said it the most, that we were the worst possible team that could actually win a title, and when you look at the names on the list, you can laugh. I always said that publicly. But we knew what we had. Right. We knew our defense was locked down in an era when nobody considered defense. All they considered was bats, crushing, bats, bats. Crushing, yeah. And we knew, right, the crushers and all that. We knew that our defense was phenomenal, and we knew we were the fastest team in the league. Sort of ahead of our time in that, because now everyone focuses on defense a lot. Um but I always said we had Ali and a bunch of nobodies, yeah, you know? it's true. If you look at the trophy, it's true. Exactly. And I took it as a compliment that we always said that. Is it an insult to say about Los Caballos that this is the worst possible team you could see in the World Series? I, I think if, you, if they do win and you put their name on the trophy and you go name to name, let's say with a team like the Expos, they're not. They have more talent on their team yeah. than, than would think. Something happens to them where they just don't play a crisp game. Like you said, together at the same time. Yeah, they just don't do it the whole way through. But it's weird. They they sort of collapse and then come back to life all together. It's a very it, – it's, a, it's, a, it's the kind of thing I've never seen. Like you say, you see some of these teams make a run and eventually fizzle out. This team has talent. What do you do with Mo Money's lineup? Okay, it's very hard. Mo Cass is going to play third. I'm saying if you're Mo Money. Oh, the defensive alignment. Yeah, Nate is not here, so Mo Cass goes to third. Jordy is going to play short center. Right. How do you build one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? What is your lineup if you're Mo Haber? Because I thought about this a little bit. You, uh, you're definitely going MC one. He's been tremendous. I, I wouldn't. Do you go Jordy two? Do you go JT two? Jordy like, was two I, all year. I believe their lineup should remain. Like the, I like their lineup, how they have it. They JT, had Jordy six. I don't mind it. So you would no, stick with I, that? No, I like their lineup. I, I don't. They're scoring runs. They're not, you know, they're not starving for runs. Um, again, they scored four runs in the first. You'd like to see them end up with more than seven in the game. You know what, Sam? Um, you, you're making me think. When's the last time someone lost a World Series game when they scored seven runs like Mo Money just did? 
it's in a clinching game in any game yeah I don't remember it in the last four years a team scoring seven and losing in the World Series I'd have to look but I, I don't know I couldn't answer you that but yeah I mean I, I don't I wouldn't do it I put you know I'd insert Bennett for Nate for Nathan Batish I mean that's I wouldn't tinker with the lineup so much JT's been really good where he is MC's been great I don't know these guys' numbers, but they've been hitting. No, they, they've I mean, all been pretty even. I mean, MC has the most power of them, but he yeah. leads off, so that's interesting But he's so right fast, there. and anything, you know, he starts the game off. He, I mean, he's usually on. He's they usually have scored, on. I think, please correct me if I'm wrong. Game one, yes. I believe they've scored game every two, game. Yes. I've, they've, game every three, game yes. a run in the first. Yes, at least they one have. run in the first. They have. So they get things going. They come to play. They You're come right. out. I mean, look, Maurice Haber has his team ready. He, has, he always has his teams ready. Um, and, and they come out, and they come out with the noise, and um, that's why I really felt like, you know what, it's probably all coming to an end now for Caballos on Friday. They're up 4 nothing, Right. And not only 4 nothing, they're up 4 nothing with where you would think Jordy's going to get to third with one out. You, you pointed that so out on the you, broadcast. Yeah, so he couldn't get there because of his shoulder. The next guy, I think, popped up to the infield anyway. Right. Um, I don't know if it changes if he's on third or whatever it is, but... They, as crazy as it is, they left a run out there in the first inning. Um, you know, again, when the inning ended, I don't think anybody really considered that this was going to be a game. No. Um, but, you know, it was, and now we're sitting here. And it was, okay, so let's say you go MC1. Okay. Just go through this yeah. lineup with me. JT2. JT2 or Jordy2. You got to consider one or the other, but let's say he's sticking what you're saying. JT2. John 3. Good. Morris Casson four. Yeah, four. Morris, excuse me. Morris Casson four. He, um, over the course of his life, is probably the most clutch guy that yeah. you could ever meet. White yeah. Walkers, he had every big hit. Yeah. How many home runs did he hit to the parking lot over there? Even on the ones who knock, that team that lost that in the game. That at home plate, I keep remembering. Yeah, the, yeah. the helmet yeah. going straight up into yeah. orbit. Which has to be pre-choreographed. But, does it? I'm going to... You're going to pre Corey. I want to watch the dance again. Okay. Game four, Morris was up with men on multiple times. Did not come through. It's not like him. No. It's not like Mocas. But he's their four hitter. Okay, so if he's their four hitter, Ruby Shalou five is a power bat. You're not touching that. Then you have JT or. or Then you're going Jordy Jordy. there. Six. I I like Jordy there better. Your other option is to put Jordy two, JT three. No, I like like the way it is. John four, Mocas five, Ruby six. No. Okay, then you have Cheeto's seven, who finally slowed down. And he came slowed back down to a little for sure. I think he got a hit in the last inning uh, in front of Farka. But, uh, I mean, look, if he's batting seventh, and then you have Haber up eighth. Haber up eighth. That's a lineup that doesn't stop. I said it, I think, on the broadcast. It do- you have no breaks, really. Even their nine and ten especially when Nate was here, is not automatic. No. Like Birdman. And, Birdman can uh, get a hit. So could Nate. So could uh, Dennis. I don't, I don't, then if I've seen in very limited, he's excellent behind the plate. He's excellent behind the plate. Los Caballos refuses to run the bases properly in this. That's they're just, not, that's what it is. It just is what it is. They just don't do they're, things right. No, they're not, they get, <laughs> I, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen a team get thrown out more in the bases it's crazy. than this team. I don't, I don't think it's possible. Well, you, you said it about a baddie last year and it was like costing them. You said maybe you shouldn't push it as much as you, as, as, as you are. But this is like. But this team, you sort of expect them yeah, to get out on the bases. Yeah, you think they're going to do it and like they send when nobody would send. Like Mark Braha, <laughs> that last throw like we don't even talk about it because they won and they were winning already he just told them to go and I think the third baseman might have had the ball or it just squirted past them or whatever it was they are the worst base running team I've ever seen and their their ba- their third base coach fluctuates from Farco when he's not on to Jeffrey you get some Hollywood there DR peeks in once in a while each one has screwed up coaching third base right. throughout the course of the year, and they don't want to make an adjustment no, and pick no. a guy. This is what they are. This is, uh, you know, I, I, you know, you talked. I just want to change it a little up. You talked about uh, Mo Money's lineup and yeah. how good it is. Um, can't say enough about Caballos is top of their order. Uh, first four or five guys. Yeah. I don't know the actual numbers, but Lee, Farka, Elsac, Mark. Uh, I, do, I mean, if they got out twice all day on Friday, it's a lot. I want to talk about each one quickly. Okay, Lee went three for four. He got the leadoff hit down four nothing. How big is that? How big is that not to get the first out of the game? 
and then down 6-3. Same thing. Lead off hit Same again. Thing. Clean base hit. Huge hits. Big, big Next lifts. one is Farka. The thing with Farka is this. He still hasn't hit his home run. No. His triple, even his double, you know? But he has another game still. Yeah. No, but he. What was he in this game? He had to oh, he did great four, this game. Four four. He was he was three for four yeah, in this game. Yeah, he was he good. Had, um, he had to hit that line. line. Haber, Haber was hard on himself for that. Tough play, Haber. Very tough I mean, that's, play. That's a, that's a I tough don't know. Play. I gotta watch it again when you send the highlights out. But that's a tough play. No, it was. It, it, that's a hit. It, it was a tough. He w he was the one saying he should have fielded it to us. I don't know. I, I you know. okay. I, I mean, he did have a good defensive game, but I can't count that as an no, e three. No, no, that's a no, big it's hit. definitely a hit. He then had the ball in the gap that JT deked me on. That was great. He then had the bloop, which is a sign of good things to come. The ball landed over yeah, there yeah. and ricocheted yeah. into foul yeah. territory, and Lee scored from first on that. Um, so. He had three hits, but it's still not the Farka that we know from the Knights no. and from swimming and from butter. It's still not that power, power bat. And I think that's bad news for Mo Money because it still could happen. It could still happen. How long is it not going to happen for? We're in game 25 now. Yes, yes, I understand. I, I, I understand. Um, El Sac it. also had a great day. El Sac has been hitting good yeah. all series. Like Lee took a couple of games off. Mm -hmm. Lee got mm -hmm. the game-winning hit, but then he, he got had a it. couple of rough games in the series. He had a couple sure. of rough games where he was popping up every time. He figured it out in game four. And then Mark. Mark is a guy, and I don't say this lightly, Mark is a guy, if you have a son watching someone play, you tell him to play like that wow. guy. You see how he acts at shortstop. You see how he approaches um, his time at the plate. Last year, a baddie kept getting walked in front of him. This year, he's the guy getting, getting walked because yeah. he's batting fourth in front of Hollywood or DH or DR or whoever. You can't let him beat you. That's how you want to play the game. So, so when you say the teams don't have respect for each other or the teams are being nasty to each other, it's not everybody. It's just in general. But a guy like Mark, that's how you want to play this game. Seriously. And... And he's no choir boy either. He gets intense when he needs not. to. Of course not. He's not going to be know? pushed over. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. But he's also elevated his game at shortstop. He's very hard on himself because he's a first he's and second round pick. spectacular plays in this entire postseason. He's been making nice plays. He's been hard on himself on the leadoff hit to Bub in the Hubba Bubba 1-0 loss that Bub got to second on because Mark was deep in the hole and then he rushed the throw. He right, threw it away. Right. It's a tough play. And then he had an error somewhere in this series he also. Had, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe game three. But if you're playing shortstop and you're getting... You know, so many opportunities. Yeah, he's made, but he has made some spectacular plays. He's been great. He, uh, he a absolutely has been great. And like you say, the roles have been reversed. He's been the one getting walked now, uh, for guys behind him. Yeah. Now, big thing for Mo Money is Nate Batesh. This kid's made every play yeah, at third. Yeah, yeah. Can, definitely. Can someone like Mo Cass go in and fill that gap at third? He did great at short center besides yeah. for one play. I, I would. Ha I think he'll be up to the challenge. I'm sure he's taking a lot of grounders this week, uh, making that long throw. I mean, he was one of the best in the game uh, when he played the position. So, I mean, look, yeah, obviously that's Nate's spot. He's locked it down for many years. It's a big loss, uh, especially defensively. Um, but it is what it is. Players got to step up. That pick by Mo Haber was ingenious. I don't know if he was working with Mo Cass from beforehand or after yeah, or whatever. He adds a lot. He adds vocal. He adds very leadership. Vocal, very vocal. Yeah, he adds a clutch bat, a power bat. And then I've seen him play this year second base, short center. He's going to play third now. I've definitely seen him play the outfield, either right or left. I forgot, probably both at some point, but definitely right, I think. I mean, that's the type of pick you have to have, and that's the type of pick that other teams did not always right, have. Right, You know? You they, need those. You need, you know, you have to look back on the season and say, you know, we got this guy, and this was a key, and this was a key to the draft. We got this guy over this guy, this guy, and this guy. Because yes. Those are, so you have to you have to end up with them at, at the end. Listen, both teams have to be, you know, extremely proud of what they've accomplished so far. To get to this game is not easy. Um, you know, both teams not expected really to get to this point. I mean, Mo Money obviously is the favorite in this series just because of everything. But like you said, in the preseason, they were not a touted team. Um, neither was Caballos. Uh, certainly during the season, nobody thought Caballos would be here. 
um, and probably very few thought more money would be here. So these two teams really have gone, uh, you know, beyond what the odds makers gave them credit for. Yeah. Um, not enough for either, though, because one of them's going to walk out of here and nobody will ever think about them again. And the other one's going to get on this trophy. And there's a lot at stake uh, this coming Friday. Now, Sam, someone like Lee Zakaria gets a leadoff hit. We talk about it over and over and over. It's happened throughout the regular season, but in this type of game, it's going to be elevated. Yeah. The same thing, and this is dangerous, happens if you make a mistake. And we are entering game five. Yeah. Every at-bat, every swing or look at 2-0, and should you have swung at 2-0, and or should you have looked at it and it would have been 3-0, and or did you look at a lollipop and now it's 2-1? and Everything is elevated right now, and you all want the fame and the glory and the uh, you know the highlights when you do something good. But that's coming if you Absolutely. do something bad, also, and, and that's the pressure. Big of pressure, and I'll tell you something else. We talk about how it's it's a little reassuring for let's say a team like Caballos that knows if they go down that they're never out of it. But eventually, they you know those things they don't happen. They don't always happen. So you can't. You know, fall behind again, four nothing to a team like this, and think it's going to happen again. Um, I expect both teams to come out ready. I expect a low-scoring game, uh, as usually these games are. Um, I expect high intensity, and yes, every mistake going to be magnified, every big hit, um, like we say, and and it just be a lot to look forward to on Friday. I can't tell you how happy I am that there's a game five. I know, uh, me there, too. There's nothing like it, really, nothing like it, and they all should be. You, you, you put out a poll on the on the on the internet or whatever. it was like 95 to 5 percent or something I mean, crazy even if you play the game on a sunday i feel it should be standalone and an afternoon game on sunday yes yes late afternoon you told me something years ago which is just like the nfl they make you do things different you start 3 30 in the championship game yeah. the super bowl starts 6 30 you never did that all year same thing with this you should have by to. the way these teams have been on a marathon like we've never seen. Yeah, and you can't play this type of a game at 10 a.m. on Sunday. No. Or 12 p.m. on Sunday. You can't play that type of game. The Friday, 3.30, or even Sunday, 4.30, 5 o'clock off the beach where the people are coming. I mean, nobody shows up like they do at those times. And that's what it's really all about. I mean, that's why these last couple of years have been unbelievable. We've gotten this special game every single year. Um... Los Caballos has played. <laughs> this is going to be their fifth consecutive Friday wow. playing. I mean, that's unheard of. Wow. That's unheard of. We all played on the weekend of July 4th when no one is working. Right. But they played the week before that against maybe. They played the week after that um, against Hubba Bubba. They played um, they game got, one yeah. of the World Series, yeah. game four of the World Series, and now game five straight. of the yeah. World Series. Yeah. Just a scheduling quirk with the, uh, with the Sunday Fest. Besides for that... Both teams have been on a marathon schedule Sunday, Friday, Sunday, Friday. They're like major leaguers. Injuries are starting to pop up. But I sort of like that we don't do replacements in the postseason, Sandy. Yeah, I sort of it. like it. Next man in. It's next, next man, man in. up. And these teams are playing shorthanded now. For sure. This is going to be let it all out now. There's nothing after Friday. That's it. Let out the tank. And leave the car on the side of the road because somebody's walking home with this thing. Now about this. Here's the spot. Down here. It's on the base. We're going to the first year, 1976 draws. We're going to have the next four years of going across here. And then we have 16 years on this base. And then we'll someone else will be figuring it out at that <laughs> time what the, what the hell think, they want to do. Who knows? Um, who knows? But, Sandy, it is now time. Before your prediction, I want to warn the players. This thing is very heavy. <laughs> Whoever's going to hoist it, I don't want to jinx you that day and tell you, by the way, if I give you the trophy, it's heavy. I'm telling you all from now, this thing's extremely heavy. Yeah, don't take it lightly. That you don't drop it. This base is heavy. We, we put a lot of work into it. It's, it's, it's actually what it should be right now, this trophy. And, Look at uh, the height of this yeah, thing. be careful. This be was careful in my parents' living room the last week. And it's unbelievable. No one said get that thing out of here. It's like a piece of furniture now. No, it's no, unbelievable no. Who, to who, have. Who wouldn't want to look at this? This all beautiful year. trophy, and thank you for all the work you did on all of this. Sandy, time for your prediction. I want a winner, I want a okay. score, and I want a type of game that you're looking I, I, at. I, I...
אבינו שבשמיים, שתתמלא רחמים על החתן והכלה. Shalom.